Ben of cholesterolcode.com, and this is going to be my presentation on how and why you should eat, or sorry, how and why you should track what you eat. Now, I apologize in that I did set up a PowerPoint presentation, uh, which I had done a test on last night for my own personal account to do Go um, Facebook Live, and the test was successful, and I was able to see that it didn't flip it, uh, but I found out that this morning, if I don't do it from my personal account, I do it from the Adapt Live um, page. Unfortunately, it then requires that I have to do it from a mobile device. So I'm now broadcasting this now from my iPad, and sure enough, it does flip the screen. So it's kind of a flip I'd like to send uh, Facebook, but I'll set that aside. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about tracking your diet. And let's put it out on the table. Nobody gets excited about tracking their diet. In fact, it sounds like a chore. And to be sure, in many respects, it kind of is like a chore, but you do your chores. And actually, if we were to use some real life examples, you likewise also probably brush your teeth, you floss your teeth, and these are things that you don't necessarily look forward to all day. You don't do it just for your minty fresh breath, you're also doing it so that you don't have to deal with root canals at the dentist as well. Well, in many ways, tracking your diet is the same thing. You want to take the time to put together that information and put it down, and I'm going to give you some very strong case reasons as to why. So, here are the common examples that I'll hear, complaints commonly. One is, I'm not losing weight on the diet, and I don't think that it works for me. I hear this all the time. I've been feeling sluggish and low on energy, but I'm eating everything I'm supposed to. And this one I just got yesterday, actually. I got back my blood work, and I can't understand why I was so off. I've been doing everything right. All of these sentences have the same thing in common, which is they acknowledge that there's something not going the way that they would expect, and yet they're saying categorically that the diet is something that they're practicing fully. Well, the problem is, and I know I'm going to sound like an engineer here, is you are, in fact, guessing. And you kind of can't help that. The human memory is very fallible. You can't help the fact that, to some degree, we're starting to, as they would like to say in fiction, crock together uh, the amount of information that we have to best understand what it is that we're really um, eating on a day-to-day -day basis and then try to make estimates against that. And the problem is, is estimates are just that. They're already something that we think we're working for, that we think that we're working with uh, to be accurate, when in reality, if we don't really take the time to sit down and measure it, we can't really know for sure. So, <laughs> as always happens, when people come to me, the very first thing that I say is, have you been tracking your food? And the most common answer is no. But once I start pressing for it, usually I get the same response, which is, but Dave, tracking is such a drag. And again, I gotta, I gotta say this again, this may be the least popular video I ever make, but I don't care, it's probably the most powerful secret weapon to your health, because there's no greater input than your actual diet, and your ability to know that will have a great impact on your ability to change what's happening to your health. So, I actually want to say that cell phones in particular have been the great, cha great game changer, especially for me. With a cell phone, it makes it actually pretty easy. Looking up nutrition information has never been easier because you can typically do it on the fly and very quickly find out what's actually in your diet and what isn't, especially if you're on a low-carb diet. Also, there's an app for logging your diet. In fact, there are several. The two most common ones that um, I know are put into practice are both MyFitnessPal and Chronometer. I myself use MyFitnessPal, but I'm trying to transition to Chronometer. But even so, if there are other apps that you find to be more useful, you can pick those as well. Most of them now have a bar scanner so that you can actually scan the nutrition information and uh, find out what it is that's in it. And eventually that can log it out over the day so that you can be sure that you're meeting the macros you're looking for. Uh, also, I gotta say that Something that I've definitely taken advantage of, and I'll kind of get into more detail later, is you can snap a picture of your food now and log it later, if that's what will meet your time constraints a little bit more. Obviously, many of us are busy, and we may not have as much time on a per meal basis to look up everything that we're going to be making use of, especially if over the course of the day we're going to a lot of new places at the same time. And also, you're almost never without your cell phone, so it makes it a very convenient and very useful assistant, and that's very advantageous. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch us back over to the screen because here, we're not actually going to have to use that much. Uh, we're not going to have to care about whether it's flipped. 
But here's some pictures of my own food. Actually, it's looking a little washed out uh, on the iPad camera. That's a bit unfortunate, but you'll just have to trust me. Over here is my hand, and over here is a delicious breakfast, <laughs> where actually I have some eggs and some sausage and so forth. And by having my hand in that picture, um, I'm able to have a frame of reference. And that's very, that's very important because with each time that I have uh, food laid out in front of me, all I have to do is make sure that I take a picture of the food and make sure I take a picture of my hand in the picture with the food. The reason for this is because it actually provides a frame of reference. I always have the volume of my hand as a known quantity, and I can always be sure that I can make use of it. So, I'm going to give you an example of just how fast I can take a picture of my food as opposed to fully logging it. Are you ready? Okay. I've got the food in front of me. I've got my hand out. Here's my phone. I swipe it so that I've got the camera shot, right? take the picture, I'm done. That's it. That's all I had to do. And with that, I end up with something in the neighborhood of around 10 to 12 different pictures of my food a day that includes both the food and the drink. And unfortunately, a lot of these pictures I would have had that did work correctly on my computer camera last night, but don't seem to work on the iPad that I had to swap in due to the story that I told about earlier. So I'm just going to tell you visually that I not only had a chance to do this uh, and show this over here with both my hand in the pictures for food that I had, but also for food that I measured. One of the neat things about weighing a lot of the food along with having a shot of your hand in the picture is that you start getting a very strong sense of what amount of food equals what amount of size to the size of your hand. So for example, I know that the size of my hand is probably something in the neighborhood of around 100 grams of cheese. <laughs> This is advantageous in that anytime I'm looking at my food and I've got my hand nearby, I can quickly tell pretty quickly about what amount of food I can expect. I also kind of brought in uh, drinks. I also make sure that I take pictures of my drinks as well, particularly if it's not water because it can affect my diet. And if I have my hand in the picture with the drink, I can get a sense of its volume. In fact, if you're curious, my hand equals about 12 ounces, uh, so three hands worth will actually end up being a fairly large glass of a drink. Um, anyway, moreover, I want to say that uh, it's important to be honest. Another few of the pictures that I had in here were a lot of fast food pictures because a lot of people think since I'm so meticulous about recording what I, what I eat, I must be, you know, a paleo superstar. By no means am I. In fact, I think probably about 25% of my diet is what you'd call lazy keto or, or somewhat fast foodish. But the important thing is, if you're logging your diet, you have to be completely honest. You have to actually show everything you have, including those things that you aren't as necessarily proud to be recording. It's extremely important, especially when you're trying to get to the bottom of these different problems you may be having metabolically. Okay, so now I kind of want to get into the reasons to track. There's a saying I have, Ivor kind of has an offshoot of it. I like to say, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And this is super important because as you're tracking all of this food and you're getting the different nutrition values in, you're going to definitely learn a lot about what you eat, more so than you thought you would. And this has been a recurring thing with everybody I've helped with diet over and over again, especially my friends and family. So often they'll say, no, I think I'm probably having about this many grams of carbs a day, this many grams of fat a day, etc. And they're always wrong. <laughs> they're always off by as much as 20 or 30 percent at best. Some of my family members have been off by as much as 60%. They know who they are if they're watching this. Uh, so this is another factor. You're going to go see somebody like Dr. Eric Westman, and you want to be able to empower him with the limited time he has to review your case. The more information you have to bring, the better off he or she is suited to being able to help you out. And one of the biggest problems is, is you'll find when you talk to more doctors, is they may end up spending a lot of time finding out through guesswork with you as to what it is that they could possibly do to help. And a lot of times that's investigative time that you can save them if you just track your diet. The other neat thing is, is that you can help to expose allergies. I myself have come to find that there are certain foods I'm a little more sensitive to than others. And I only would have done that were it, were it not for the fact that I was tracking my food all the way through. When I'm tracking my food both in good times and in bad, 
not just when I'm trying to make a change, but when I know that I'm doing well, I actually have a nice long stretch of those foods that I was eating that I knew I was doing well under. So if I switch back to those when I'm having a problem and I find that it changed things for the better, then I know the foods that I had switched from are the ones I should look at to see if there's any kind of food sensitivities or allergies. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you some real world examples. Uh, and the names have been changed to protect the guilty, um, but I'm going to start first with the category of quantities matter. Uh, I'll start first with Salsa Sally, as I call her. Uh, she was somebody who came to me and uh, is a family member and was talking about the fact that she couldn't understand how it was that she was getting so many carbs in her diet. Uh, she was very uh, actively checking her glucometer. And when she did that, uh, certain Sure enough, she saw that she had her glucose spike after some of her favorite meals, but she couldn't figure out why. And it turned out that the quantity of salsa she was eating ended up being a major factor for her. She did know that there were some carbs in it. She didn't actually realize when she was recording at the time that when she really got down to the full quantity, she was having a very large amount. Next, I'd like to say uh, Barfly Bart, uh, who I know will eventually be watching this video as well. Um, he likes beer and thought that it was a lot less carbs than it actually is, but because he would have about three cans of beer, it's about 12 ounces each, we figured out after the fact, because he wasn't looking at the labels, that it was about one carb per ounce of beer. So he was having about 36 grams of carbs per day from his beer. Uh, next, I also want to say it's often the little things, not the big things, that turn out to surprise you in how they can change your diet. Um, Bunless Bruno, I'll call him, was always having his uh, burger patties and his hot dogs without any buns. So he felt he was doing great. And this, he took a little while because I kept having him not only log his food, but eventually we had him taking pictures. He would take pictures, but he was always taking pictures before he added his ketchup and mustard, figuring the ketchup and mustard didn't count. Sure enough, because he was having Heinz ketchup, he was having something in the neighborhood of around five or six Heinz ketchup packets packages, each of them of course being four grams of carbs per packet. Got to watch out for a lot of those. Same thing with Taco Tom, I'll call him. Uh, he's actually a friend of a friend. Um, he was full blown into the diet, very excited about the fact that he was able to make these taco shells that were cheese crisps, and they were fantastic. And he wasn't adding any more sour cream on it that had any carbs in it or anything along those lines, so he couldn't understand where it was coming from. It turned out it was the seasoning. The seasoning that he was using for his ground beef had nine carbs a packet, and he was having quite a lot of them. And then finally, I want to say, when all else fails, use a glucose monitor. A lot of times, the information that you're getting, nutrition information, especially if you're asking at a restaurant, can be wrong. Sometimes they bring you back things that turn out not to be true, and that's why one of my examples I like to call misinformed Mary. Um, another close friend of mine here in Las Vegas who likes a particular restaurant, she had asked about the nutrition information and got it back from a waiter who, it turned out a little bit later, was a little more of a lazy waiter and didn't actually report back the information she had asked for correctly. And only through a glucometer did she find out that that food was spiking it so much. She eventually had the manager check and sure enough, the manager confirmed that the nutrition information uh, was very different than what the waiter had told her. And then finally myself, dismissive Dave, uh, I at one point in time looked up, um, looked up imitation crab and satisfied with the few labels that I saw for imitation crab, I had gotten into a habit of having California rolls that had no rice on them, naked California rolls, and figured that that was not going to have too much of an impact. But sure enough, after also checking with my glucometer, I saw that my blood sugar was spiking like crazy. And so I actually asked that kitchen of one of my favorite sushi restaurants as to their, um, if they could take a picture of the label for the imitation crab. And it was way, way higher than anything that I'd looked up on, online from before. So again, glucometer is great uh, when all else fails. It's just super important. Okay, so, oh, let me actually, let me turn this off so it doesn't have any more glare. So anyway, once again, I've got to summarize that the importance of this is paramount because you start to actually get a better understanding than you think you will when you get started. It sounds like a drag, but it's really a matter of building the habit. Once you build the habit, 
you'll not only have more information for your doctors and people who are helping you, but also for yourself. Every single time, every single person who I've ever gotten into logging their food always comes back with things they're excited about that they found out. And it's always, always the first step that I have everybody take when they see that there's a problem that's very difficult for them to solve. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So I'll go ahead and take any questions since we are on live and it looks like. First one's from Larry. And do you log water? I do. I don't think everybody absolutely has to. If there's any one thing that you could theoretically leave off, it's water. But I do find that there are metabolic ramifications to whether I'm drinking water or not, especially through the course of a meal. If I don't have much water in the course of a meal, I tend to find that there's more of a risk of gastrointestinal uh, issues than if I do, if I, if I keep lots of liquids flowing and so forth. So a lot of times I try to aim for something in the neighborhood of around 32 ounces of water or some comparable liquid, something that would be hydrating as opposed to something that would be dehydrating um, for, on a per meal basis. And since I know that I'm logging every single thing that I ingest, I can feel pretty confident that I have that. All right. Well, if that wraps up the questions, I want to thank you all for joining me for Facebook Live, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.